Welcome. Welcome to the Nursing Education Expert video series. My name is Dr. Kathy Thompson, and I'm the creator of Nursing Education Expert, a website designed with nursing students and practicing nurses in mind. The Nursing Education Expert motto is in pursuit of nursing excellence because I believe nurses are lifelong learners. With so much new information and research being generated every day, I'm trying to provide you with tips and resources to help you navigate the nursing and healthcare world. I also try to clarify concepts and processes that you may be struggling with either in nursing school or in nursing practice. You can find the website at nursingeducationexpert.com. I have multiple free resources for you on topics of nursing theory, nursing research, evidence-based practice, productivity strategies, writing, and many others. Sign up for any freebie and you'll receive my free newsletter and information to help you pursue personal and professional nursing excellence. And I promise not to spam you. And you can unsubscribe at any time, though I hope you don't. My site has been ONCODE certified since 2015 for trustworthy health information and ethical business practices. This video is based on the blog post, What is the Nursing Meta Paradigm? You can get the full text at nursingeducationexpert.com forward slash meta paradigm. I have added some additional comments to this video that are not found on that blog post. So let's get started. Meta paradigms, theoretical frameworks, conceptual models, assumptions, propositions, concepts. These are all terms that every nursing student needs to understand and apply for nursing theory class. This video will explain what a meta paradigm is, which phenomena define the four nursing meta paradigm concepts, and will provide examples of the meta paradigm concepts from selected nursing theorists. And if you haven't already, download my free eight page resource guide of nursing theory and philosophy terms and concepts. I have a link in the notes on the blog at nursingeducationexpert.com forward slash meta paradigm and in the description uh, window for this video below. Meta paradigm is defined as a set of concepts and propositions that sets forth the phenomena with which a discipline is concerned. A meta paradigm is the most general statement of a discipline, and as such, it functions as a framework in which the more restricted structures of conceptual models develop. Another definition of meta paradigm is the concepts that identify the phenomena of central interest to a discipline, the propositions that describe those concepts and their relationships to each other. A meta paradigm, therefore, is the most abstract, the most global perspective of the discipline. The continuum of nursing knowledge starts, therefore, with meta paradigms as the most abstract, all the way to practice or situation specific theory as the most practical and most concrete forms of nursing knowledge. To remind you of the nursing knowledge continuum, I'll repost the diagram I designed for my post on theoretical frameworks and conceptual models. I'm not sure if it's going to completely show up in this particular slide, but if it doesn't, I'll give you a link to it in the notes. And I'm going to repeat myself here because again, this is a very abstract concept, but when we talk about the meta paradigm of nursing, we're talking about the areas that are the most general basis of nursing practice, the elements of nursing. So hopefully I've described in it in a bunch of different terms, one of which hopefully resonates with you so that you can understand what a meta paradigm really is. Now for a theory to be considered a nursing theory, the four nursing meta paradigm concepts must be addressed in the theory. Now the extent to which they're addressed may be different with the different theorists. 
One of the areas you'll critique when critiquing a nursing theory is how well the theorist defined the four nursing metaparadigm concepts. When you're reading different theories, you'll notice that some theorists will have all of the metaparadigm concepts very well defined, while others may have only a couple of concepts well defined and maybe one or two of the others that are mentioned, but not very well fleshed out. So let's look at the four metaparadigm concepts. The four phenomena that are of central interest to of nursing practice or the ones that are the key foci of patient care are identified as nursing, person, health, and environment. So all of nursing practice is distilled to these four central phenomena. These then are the basic elements of nursing, what nursing is generally concerned with. Nursing, person, health, and environment. These four phenomena or these four metaparadigm concepts make up the overall metaparadigm of nursing. Now something important to note is that the phenomena of person, health, and environment all relate to the recipients of nursing care or the recipient of nursing actions. While the phenomenon of nursing is only focused on the nurse. The definitions of each of the four metaparadigm concepts are important to understand because they correlate with the BAVs or the beliefs, assumptions, and values of the theorist. These BAVs are different for each theorist. That just makes sense, right? If you understand how the theorist is defining the concepts, you could identify and therefore understand where the theorist is coming from in terms of their worldview or their perspective of nursing, or that is their nursing theory. You can check out my blog post on how to identify your BAVs to write your personal philosophy to get a little bit more information on uh, how BAVs uh, come together. I'll link to this in the notes and in the description box for this video. I'll also give you examples a little bit later in this presentation. So let's generally define the four nursing metaparadigm concepts first. Let's start with the phenomenon of nursing. This metaparadigm concept is related to the art and science of nursing. It consists of nursing actions or nursing interventions. Think of this metaparadigm concept as what nurses do and keep that in mind so you don't confuse it with the phenomenon of person. A nurse is a person, but the nursing metaparadigm is different than the phenomenon of person. This metaparadigm concept includes the nurse applying professional knowledge, procedural and technical skills, and indirect and direct or hands-on patient care. The phenomenon of person. Nurses provide nursing care to persons. The person is the one receiving the nursing care. The level and the type of care will vary, of course, with the acuity of the patient or the needs of the client. The person is the one receiving the nursing care. What's important about this phenomenon, though, is that person is defined according to the recipient of nursing care, the patient or the client, and it may include the patient's family and friends and the community. So the nurse needs to consider how the patient is defining family when planning care, because this will impact the type of support the patient might be getting or might not be getting, and the resources needed as a result, visiting hours, etc. For the phenomenon of health, the concept of health, again, is relative to the person. And just like with, with the phenomenon of person, 
The phenomenon of health is defined according to the patient's perspective, the patient's values, belief, and culture. What one person considers healthy may be considered unhealthy to another person. What one person considers an acceptable quality of life may be considered an unacceptable quality of life to another person. So again, the per person's perspective about what health is to them is really vitally important. The phenomenon of health refers then to the patient's level of wellness. That is the, what we call the health or the wellness illness continuum. And it's in all its many aspects, physical, psychological, mental, intellectual, emotional, and spiritual. And the ability to access health care and access resources to support health and wellness is included in this phenomenon. And finally, let's talk about the phenomenon of environment. While we typically think of the environment as something external to us, like a setting or a place, a person's environment is also internal. Stress, genetics, adaptation, these are all internal factors that influence how we deal with both the external and the internal world. The environment consists of internal, external, and social factors that impact a patient's health including genetics, immune function, culture, interpersonal relationships, economics, mental state, geographic location, education level, politics, ecology, social status, job or career level, etc. Hopefully the explanations of MetaParadigm and the four MetaParadigm concepts make, are making sense to you. So here, now I'm going to talk about, I'm going to give you examples of each of the four meta paradigms according to different nursing theorists. Each nursing theorist defines that met, the nursing meta paradigm concepts according to their own perspective, their own worldview. Because each theorist is a unique human being, they each have a different perception of the role of nursing and the definitions of person, health, and environment within their own worldview. Therefore, their definitions of the metaparadigm concepts are going to be different. So Oram's definition of person is going to be different from Mar Mar Martha Rogers' definition of person, for example. It's also going to be important for you to notice the different language used by these nurse theorists to describe the metaparadigm concepts. And it's going to seem like apples and oranges, but realize they are defining the same four concepts, but their own worldviews, their own perspective of what nursing is and how it provides for people, etc., is going to color their definitions. Now I've chosen nurse theorists from different perspectives to emphasize how these perspectives altered the way each theorist saw the world of nursing. They're not in any particular order, but you can look in your theory text to see which perspective they're aligned with, be it environmental systems, health behavior, interpersonal relationships, energy, goals, etc. Different nursing theory authors or what I mean is authors of nursing theory textbooks ascribe different foci to the different theories and the different models. So we're going to start with the person meta paradigm concept. Do note that you're going to see page numbers with these definitions. I've taken these definitions from the master's textbook on nursing theory and the page numbers are just where I got the definitions from. So let's start with Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale defined person as the recipient of nursing care. Now notice there's nothing more specific there. There are no details. So she really could have meant anything. She could have meant a biopsychosocial spiritual being, but she did not define person that specifically. Now you might ask, how do we know how some of these theorists define the meta paradigm concepts if they weren't that specific in their definition? 
And the bottom line is going to be that you really just have to discern their definitions from what they wrote about, from the bulk of their writings. So that would hold true for any of the theorists for whom uh, a, a definition or for which a definition is not completely fleshed out. Now notice that Virginia Henderson, Henderson defined person a little bit more in detail. She said a person was the recipient of nursing care who is composed of biological, psychological, sociological, and spiritual components. Now that's important to note because if you use Henderson's theory, then when you assess the person, you are going to be assessing biological components, psychological components, sociological, and spiritual components. That's part of her definition. And so therefore the assessment tool would want to cover those areas. Jean Watson defined person as a unity of mind, body, spirit, nature, or an embodied spirit. So it makes sense, doesn't it? That if you follow Jean Watson's theory, you're going to be assessing the person's mind. So everything that goes with that body and spirit, that is how she defined person. Dorothy Johnson defined person as a biopsychosocial being who is a behavioral system with seven subsystems of behavior. So you have a little bit different twist here. You have a biopsychosocial being who is a behavioral system and she defined the seven subsystems of behavior that the nurse should assess to assess this person as a whole. Now, notice Imogene King's definition of person. It is a personal system that interacts with interpersonal and social systems. Imogene King used a systems theory approach to her nursing theories. She described the person as a personal system who then interacts with other systems, interpersonally and, so, and through social systems. Martha Rogers had a completely different take on person. She believed that a person was an energy field and described person, the definition of person, as an irreducible, irreversible, pan-dimensional, negantropic energy field identified by pattern. And she called that the unitary human being. Her theory is called the theory of unitary human humans. Martha Rogers believed that a person was a being and an energy field in constant interaction with the environment. So her theory is, has a physics dimension to it, talks about energy fields, talks about patterns. So again, a different perspective on nursing. Dorothea Oram's theory, the theory of self-care, she defined person as a person under the care of a nurse, a total being with universal developmental and health deviation needs who is capable of self-care. So a few more theorists, let's look at Hildegard Peplau. Peplau defined person as encompasses the patient, the one who has problems for which expert nursing services are needed or sought, and the nurse, a professional with particular expertise. So you can see that person to her was this interaction of the patient and the nurse together, and that's important to her theory. Now, on the other hand, this is a very different definition. Madeline Leininger defined person as a human being or a family, a group, a community, or an institution. So you can see a very wide scope of definition for person here. Now that will make sense if you, once you learn about her theory, but the fact that an institution could, is, could be the person then you'll see how she puts, what does the nurse do for that person if the person is considered an institution? 
So something to think about when you get there. Pender described person as an individual, who in this case is the primary focus of her health promotion model that she's referring to. So in this case, we're looking on at a one-on-one -on -one relationship, right? Uh, she's looking at a person as an individual. And the last nursing theorist uh, that we're gonna look at is Rosemary Parsi. And she defined person as an open being, more than and different from the sum of the parts in mutual simultaneous interchange with the environment who chooses from options and bears responsibility for choices. So again, you're going to see this definition is very detailed and it's going to fit in obviously with the rest of her model. Okay, so to reiterate, different worldviews from the different theorists based on their life experience, their own values, their own beliefs, their own attitudes, will le lead to different definitions of the meta paradigm concepts or the general essential elements of nursing. And that leads to different ways to practice nursing based on those beliefs. All right, so let's move on to the health meta, meta paradigm concept. And again, I'm going to go through these same theorists and give you their definitions of health. Florence Nightingale defined health in terms of wellness and our abilities. So she said health was not only to be well, but to be able to use well every power we have to use. Virginia Henderson defined health as based on the patient's ability to function independently. And she defined that as being outlined in the 14 components of basic nursing care that she outlined for her theory. So think about this. She said health was the patient's ability to function independently. So would she consider not healthy someone who was not able to function independently? So something for you to think about. Jean Watson described health as healing, as harmony, wholeness, and comfort. Dorothy Johnson defined the health metaparadigm concept as the efficient and effective functioning of a system, behavioral system in, uh, balance and stability. Health, according to Imogene King, was the dynamic life experiences of a human being, which implies continuous adjustment to stressors in the internal and external environment through optimum use of one's resources to achieve maximum potential for daily living. So there's a lot of information in that definition. You can just pick that apart to see how she believed health was achieved. Martha Rogers again was uh, all about energy and patterns. She said that health and illness are part of a continuum and that choosing actions that lead to the fulfillment of a person's potential were part of this health uh, definition. Dorothea Oram said that health was a state characterized by soundness or wholeness of developed human structures and of bodily and mental functioning. So again, you've got a little bit more specificity in this definition. Peplau defined health as that it implies forward movement of personality and other ongoing human processes in the direction of creative, constructive, productive, personal and community living. Leininger said that health was a state of well-being, but one that's culturally defined, valued and practiced. Pender defined health as a positive high-level state. Rosemary Parsi defined health as a continuously changing process of becoming. Remember her theory is the theory of human becoming. So now here are examples of the theorists and how they define the environment meta paradigm. 
Now, I know that this is tedious, so let me just say, just bear with me here, because I think for these last two meta paradigm concepts, again, seeing how the theorists define environment differently is going to make sense when you put it all together when you're learning about these different theories. You can then look at their definitions and you could make an assumption or make a prediction as to how their theory is going to guide nursing practice. So I'm hoping that this repetition and this is going to make sense by the time you get to the end of this video. So now Florence Nightingale is from this environmental perspective. And so you would expect that this definition of environment is very important to her theory. She defined environment as external, things like temperature, bedding, ventilation, and internal, meaning what you're taking internally, food, water, and medications. Henderson didn't explicitly define environment, but alluded to it in her writing. So she talked about a supportive environment and external environmental influences uh, that influence biologic, physical, and behavioral systems. Uh, she didn't talk so much about systems, but those were the foci. Uh, and also in her writings, there was some discussion on the impact of community on the individual and the family. So the impact of the community would be environment. Jean Watson's definition of environment uh, interchanges with what she also calls he healing space. So it's a non-physical energy, energetic environment, a vibrational field that is integral not only with the person where the nurse is in that person's environment right not only in the environment but the nurse himself is the environment so creates an environment integral with the person they're caring for dorothy johnson simply defined environment as both the internal and external environments Imogen King also defined environment as both external and internal. But she gave a little bit more detail in that the external environment is the context within which human beings grow, develop, and perform daily activities. The internal environment of humans transforms energy to enable them to adjust to continuous external environmental changes. Martha Rogers said the environment is an energy field, including everything that is not the person. And it also is irreducible and pan-dimensional. It's identified by pattern manifesting characteristics that are different from those of the parts and encompassing all that is other than the given human field. So again, everything that is not the person is considered the environment in Martha and as an energy field that's considered the environment in Martha Rogers theory. Orem defined the environment as physical, chemical, biologic, and social contexts within which human beings exist. Components of the environment included environmental factors, environmental elements, environmental conditions, and the developmental environment forces outside the organism within the context of culture is Peplau's definition of the environmental meta paradigm. Leininger said the environmental context was the totality of an event, situation, or an experience that gives meaning to human expressions, interpretations, and social interactions in physical, ecological, sociopolitical, and or cultural settings. So again, obviously, all those pieces there, uh, physical, ecological, sociopolitical, and cultural settings are going to be how Leininger assesses the environment. And if you're following her theory, it's how you would assess the environment also. Pender defined environment as the physical, interpersonal, and economic circumstances in which persons live. 
an environment is coexisting in a mutual process with the person, according to Parsi's theory. Okay, so as you read any of these theories, I want you to think about the definitions of the meta paradigms from the theorist's point of view. And I think you'll understand their theories as a whole when you can see the theorist's thoughts evident in the definitions. And then you'll also see those carried through to the propositions. Remember, a proposition is just a relationship between one or uh, two or more concepts. So finally, we're going to look at the nursing meta paradigm concept definitions. As we go through these, again, using the same theorists, remember that these definitions of nursing define how each of the theorists saw the work of nursing. These definitions are going to form the basis of what nursing practice looks like, according to Nightingale's theory or Orem's theory or Watson's theory, etc. So according to Nightingale, the work of nursing was to alter or manage the environment to implement the natural laws of health. Florence Nightingale was the lady with the lamp. Remember her story? She went to the Crimea, cared for the patients, cleaned up the hospital setting, ventilation, light, water, that was, those were all important concepts in her theory. She altered and she managed the environment to make it more healthy for the soldiers to recover. That is the work of nursing practice, according to Nightingale. Nursing for Henderson was to assist the person sick or well in performance of activities. And these are those 14 components of basic nursing care that she outlined in her theory and help the person gain independence as rapidly as possible. Watson's caring theory defines nursing as a reciprocal transpersonal relationship in caring moments guided by carative factors and caritas processes. So those that those languages, carative factors in the caritas processes are specific to Watson's caring theory. Those are the terms she came up with to describe um, uh, how nursing is performed. Dorothy Johnson defined nursing as an external regulatory force that then acts to preserve the organization and the integrity of the patient's behavior at an optimal level under those conditions in which the behavior constitutes a threat to physical or social health or in which illness is found. Nursing for Imogene King was a process of human interaction and the goal is helping patients achieve their goals. So if you remember one of the big propositions from uh, King's theory is that mutual goal setting was a, a, a key focus there that when nurses and patients set goals together then optimal outcomes will occur so look at her definition here of nursing it's a process it's human interaction and the goal of the nurse is to help patients achieve their goals so note that Martha Rogers language in her definition of nursing is again scientifically based. Remember she's all about energy and waves and patterns. So she says the role of the nurse is uh, someone who seeks to promote symphonic interaction between the human and environmental fields to strengthen the integrity of the human field and to direct and redirect patterning of the human and environmental fields for realization of maximum health potential. So again, just to take a piece of this, when you're caring for a patient using Rogers theory, uh, let's say physical um, care, what are you doing? You are strengthening the integrity of the human field. So in that language is used to care for patients. So what you're doing for these patients is trying to strengthen that human energy field, the integrity of that field. 
So illness would be a break in the integrity of that field. I hope that makes sense. Now, self-care theory is a very popular theory in nursing. Dorothea Oram said nursing was therapeutic self-care designed to supplement self-care requisites. This is all language from her theory. She said that nursing actions fall into one of three categories, wholly compensatory, partly compensatory, or supportive educative system. Your assessment of which category your patient is in will determine your nursing actions for that patient. Peplau's theory is all about interpersonal interaction. So she defines nursing as the therapeutic interpersonal process between the nurse and the patient. In Leininger's transcultural or cultural care theory, nursing is the activities directed toward assisting, supporting, or enabling with needs in ways that are congruent with the cultural values, beliefs, and life ways of the recipient of care. Nursing, according to Pender, includes raising consciousness related to health-promoting behaviors, promoting self-efficacy, enhancing the benefits of change, controlling the environment to support behavior change, and managing bar barriers to change. So right there, she outlines what the work of nursing is. Parsi defines nursing as a learned discipline. The nurse uses true presence to facilitate the becoming of the participant. So I hope you can see from these examples that the definitions from each of these nursing theorists, they each have a different picture of the world and a different picture of the central work of nursing. I think that's kind of cool, don't you? I hope this video has helped you see the, the meta paradigm concepts more clearly and that you begin to see how the nursing meta paradigm concepts and how they're put together by the different theorists influence nursing practice. Hey, and don't forget to download my nursing uh, concept guide to help you in your theory classes. So again, the link is in the original blog post on what is the nursing meta, par meta paradigm and I will put it also in the video description below. The notes for the original blog post and your free nursing theory and philosophy terms and concepts guide link can be found at nursingeducationexpert.com forward slash meta paradigm. I've given you the APA format for how to cite this video in this slide. Do note that this software does not let me left justify or do a hanging indent for the references. So do remember that 6th edition APA does require your references to have a hanging indent. And at this time, I don't know what the YouTube URL is going to be. So when you do watch this video, just copy and paste the URL from your browser bar and insert it where you see the brackets on this citation. The references for this video are found here. You can also find the references on the blog post and they're probably much easier to copy than from this video. The major reference is the Kathleen Masters Nursing Theories textbook. This text is from Jones and Bartlett Learning. I want to thank you again for spending this time with me. I hope you found this video informative. Other videos from Nursing Education Expert are also found on this YouTube channel. And be sure to visit me at nursingeducationexpert.com.